Welcome to Crash Concepts, where the economy, energy, and the environment are explored. Up next, fresh ideas and insights into the factors that are driving the world and shaping your future. Presenting information you can't afford to live without, here's Chris Martinson. Welcome, everyone, to this Peak Prosperity Podcast. It is September 12th, 2017. I am your host, of course, Chris Martinson. Health. Your health. As you know, one of the most important forms of capital we talk about at Peak Prosperity is living capital. Now, that's your body. That's your health. That's the food you're eating. It's the ecosystem you live in. Today, we are going to be talking with an exceptional woman with an exceptional story. We're going to be covering health, nutrition, and local investing, all centered around chocolate. That's right, chocolate. How all of these things come together, it's a really fascinating story. And it's a story of recovered health and sharing that wisdom with others, ultimately through chocolate made with the purest ingredients and love. So we're going to find out about that today by talking <clears throat> with the founder and CEO of Pure 7 Chocolate, that's Julie McQueen. Hi, Julie. Hi, Chris. Welcome to the program. Now, um, full disclosure, I'm an investor in Pure 7, so that's where the local investing angle comes in, hmm. and uh, very proud investor. So we're going to be talking about this amazing company with this amazing woman. So, Julie, where do we start with this story? How about, you know what drew me to it first was uh, really where you began in this story, so your own health arc. I mean, you didn't wake up one day and say, I'm going to be in the chocolate business. You, hmm. you got there eventually. Where did it start? Yeah, absolutely not. I was a stay-at-home mom to four of my children and um, we weren't doing well health-wise. Uh, mm. We were sick. The, mm -hmm. the family was sick and I was at the doctor's weekly with my kids. Um, my son had just been diagnosed on the autism spectrum. My daughter was starting to uh, rock back and mm. forth and starting to, to stim. And so I was looking for answers and I couldn't find them. Uh, I tried everything. I tried homeopath, naturopath, um, uh, supplements, all kinds of stuff. And the only thing that seemed to work for our health and, and reversing these symptoms was um, food. <laughs> food. That's all it was. Food. Good food. And when, when I noticed the symptoms starting to disappear in my children, I started getting better at it and researching it and figuring mm -hmm. out how to make it better for, for them. Um, and we ended up landing um, on the GAPS diet and did that very strictly, the GAPS diet, and I got better at it and um, took it very seriously. It was, it was my full-time job um, taking care of my kids and feeding them the right food and food that feeds the body uh, for recovery and health. And I noticed um, the stimming and the rocking, that all disappeared within, within weeks. That all disappeared. My daughter, um, her rocking disappeared within one week. Um, wow. So, so for our listeners, what is a GAPS diet? The GAPS is uh, a diet... Uh, by Natasha Campbell McBride. It stands for Gut and Psychology Syn Syndrome Diet. And she uh, founded the diet when her own um, son was diagnosed on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. She's a, a neuroscientist and started uh, figuring out a way to help her own child recover from autism. And uh, her, her child is uh, fully recovered uh, by following the GAPS diet. Mm -hmm. um, and, and conventional medicine, where was where were the regular doctors in this story for you? Actually, the the regular doctors, I mean, they, they prescribed um, ABA therapies. Um, they weren't really a lot of uh, much help at all. Uh, there was there was they actually they discouraged me from dieting, doing any type of. They said it was it's a waste of time, and that's why it took me so long. Mm -hmm. It took probably after the diagnosis, uh, it took me uh, a year, a year and a half before even attempting to to try diet because yeah. I didn't think it was effective. I didn't think it would work. Something so simple as food. I didn't I think know, would. Food. Yeah, food. That's all it was, food. Um, and, it, and I was, um, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't so within believe weeks. within, I actually, I can't even say weeks. Chris, it was, it was like a week. A week later, um, my son's ADHD diagnosis, um, it went away. I brought him back for a diet uh, to, to, the, to the doctor a year later. And he didn't understand how that could happen. And mm. I, I explained, it's food. Um, we just ate the right foods and we took away the refined sugars and uh, all the processed foods. And we ate real food, food that's nourishing, foods that's rebuilding mm -hmm. the cel cells. The GAP study is all about gut repair. Mm -hmm. You're healing and sealing the gut. You're uh, rebalancing your gut flora. Um, and it's amazing. It just, it helps, it helps with depression, anxiety, um, all kinds of diagnosis. Uh, attention problems, 
uh, everything. Mm -hmm. So um, I I experienced it firsthand. I mean, how effective that it was. And so uh, we missed uh, in the, the, uh, the way that chocolate, I'll keep going, the way that we, we stumbled upon chocolate is um, we missed chocolate. Mm -hmm. um, it, that Who's was we? me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really missed chocolate. Uh -huh. And I was doing the GAPS diet myself. I mean, the yeah. whole family needed to do it to make right. sure that the house was clean and safe for the kids. Because mm -hmm. if I had um, my processed foods, which I, I was addicted to, mm -hmm. I loved my carbs. I loved waking up and eating my whoopie pies and going to bed, eating my hot fudge sundaes. Yep. So this was... Um, hard for me. This mm -hmm. was really hard for me to do, giving giving all of that up and doing it. I did it for my kids. I wouldn't I don't think I actually would have done this uh -huh. without my kids. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was truly and I think it's probably one of the biggest addictions that there is. Food. We're addicted to our food. Yeah. It's easy um it's easy food um to eat. Easy and, and it's been engineered exactly. to trigger our swallow reflexes and more cravings. Yes, I mean, they've exactly. got it. It's a science. It is. Yeah. It is. They've got, yeah, the sugars uh, mm -hmm. and the carbs that, um, that I loved. Uh, it honestly, for myself personally, it took me, um, oh, you know, they say after two weeks, you mm -hmm. stop your cravings. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me um, a good year and a half before I could drive by my spots, my Starbucks, my Pete's coffee without like mm -hmm. you know, get, <laughs> jittering a little <laughs> yep yep um but you know how i dealt with it i i've learned how to make real food yeah. and um how to substitute i guess the foods that i used to love and craved i learned how to make them healthy and then when you eat real food real food this way for a while you start um not wanting to go back mm. to that old the right. process because it doesn't taste good anymore. Taste like you could taste the chemicals. You could taste the it's too sweet. It's too um it tastes the like chemicals. Mm -hmm. Really. My whoopie pies. I love whoopie pies. So after about <laughs> <laughs> after about two and a half years of being really strict gaps diet, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna have a whoopie pie. Yeah. And I did. I went into a cafe and I ordered my whoopie pie and um I took one bite and I threw it away. It did not taste good to me anymore. Mm -hmm. My whoopie pies that I made, you know, with my almond flour and the, the, the way it, I like them better. They taste much better to me. Um, so I learned how to take the foods that I craved and, and turn them into real foods that would nourish the body. Um, and so that's how I got into chocolate. <laughs> right. So you were, you were, you couldn't go back to whoopie pie, but you wanted you wanted that treat back in your life. Something I love chocolate. chocolate. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I love so, chocolate. It was my mission to to create a, a, a shelf stable bar. Um, but it didn't start there. How, what was your first experience with? Like, how did you start to introduce chocolate back into the? What was your first taste of chocolate again? Um, actually, it wasn't. It wasn't great. Um, because <laughs> uh, I missed chocolate so much, I was craving it. So I took cacao powder and some coconut oil on the stove, mixed it up with mm -hmm. some honey mm -hmm. on the stove and I drank it and I made myself sick. <laughs> <laughs> I drank like a half a cup of that and it was just too much for my body. Yeah. Um, too sweet, too much. Um, but I was determined I wanted uh, a bar and I would, I was, I couldn't believe that this was not out there in the world, that nobody had created this yet. I would go to uh, whole foods every week, mm -hmm. every week. I'd look at those shelves and I'd be like, why doesn't this exist? Well, there must be a hundred chocolate bars on there types. is or 200. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, and you couldn't find what you're looking for. No, I could not find a bar that I felt good enough with the ingredients that I would eat and put in my body. After all the work that I did, I wasn't willing to do that. Uh, there was soy, there was uh, gluten, dairy, soy, there was fillers, uh, sugars. Um, it was hard to find a bar without sugar. Even when I did it, there was like chemicals and ingredients I couldn't pronounce on the label. So I'm like this, this is something that needs to happen. Like I, I've got to figure out how to bring a bar. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I, I actually, I need it for me. I need to figure out how to make a bar for me. And I yeah. want that bar to be sh real. Uh -huh. Like I don't want, um, cause I went to, um, chocolate tears, uh, and asked how, how do you do this? Like, how could this be done? Um, so they, they told me it can't be done. You can't take honey and put that in chocolate because that is ganache. Um, it's, it's too high in moisture content, uh -huh. so that will not work. And meaning what hap what, what do you mean not work? It doesn't work because it turns, um, it will, it will seize. 
chocolate will seize. It turns into this big globby brownie mess that there's nothing you can do with it except throw it away. Mm -hmm. And I did actually go through batch after batch after mm -hmm. I, I spent a lot of money actually, uh -huh. hundreds uh, or hundred, uh, thousands of dollars throwing uh, chocolate batches away because yeah. it seized up on me. Um, yeah, those aren't pretty days when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah. you're determined. You're going to make so a bar determined. of chocolate out yeah. of honey with, with honey sweetened. And of course, it's it's mm -hmm. a trickier process than yeah. sugar or Absolutely. unsweetened or, or something like that. Or, yeah. you know, not unsweetened, I guess, but sweetened with um, stevia or one of these yeah. other yeah. pieces like that. Those. Yeah. So, so describe what, what is chocolate making really? Most people don't know this. I didn't know this before I got involved. Yeah. But there's something called tempering. You have to temper chocolate. And I didn't know how to do that, actually. I, I, I wasn't it, a chocolatier. What, does, <laughs> what does tempering even mean? Tempering is to, it's, it's bringing the crystals together in the chocolate. And you have got to be able to temper it. If you don't temper it. And when I first started making and I thought I was making chocolate, and it looked good to me. But uh, after a week or two, it started blooming because I didn't temper it the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Um, because honey sweetened chocolate is a hard way, a hard, it's not the same, it's a very difficult process to temper. Um, but to keep um, your bar from blooming, which means it turns kind of white and, and mushy, mm -hmm. uh, is, is what happens to it if it's not tempered properly. Um, you have to make sure you know how, um, how to temper it. So it took a, a while to figure that out with honey because mm -hmm. the moisture content is so high in the, in the honey. And I, I do need to say before I forget, honey is important to me. Mm -hmm. As a sweetener, that's our only sweetener at, at in my household because honey is so pure in its state. So I think that's important to mention. Um, honey as a sweetener, it's it's as intended. It's that simple, right? It's food. Uh, it comes right straight from the hive and it's food. Mm -hmm. You look at any other sweetener out there and it's processed, even coconut sugar, uh, which, you know, I like some of the chocolate out there that's made with coconut sugar, but it's processed. Mm -hmm. um, even maple syrup. You take 50 gallons of, ma of maple syrup, right? To boil sap, it down, yep. to sap, and you boil it down into something that's such a big hit to the body. Um, it's not in its natural state. And so that's what I love about the honey. Uh, it doesn't spike the glucose levels. It, it, I feel great um, in, in stable and in even. Um, I don't get those spikes, the, the sugar highs yeah. uh, with honey. So, All right. So after a lot of investigation, experimentation, thousands uh -huh. of dollars of failed batches, which uh, it must have been an interesting moment for the garbage man. What is, <laughs> what is happening here? Right? <laughs> so eventually, though, you figured out how to temper chocolate properly mm -hmm. with honey. I, yep. It's a bit of a, a trade secret, I guess. And um, <laughs> <laughs> yep. but, but so you finally got bars and these yeah. were for your own consumption, I guess. Right. It, it really was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, I, and I guess I decided to share with the world. My mind kept racing at night um, how to how to package it up and how to distribute it and get it out into the hands of of the gaps. Um, people out there that were craving this too, like I yeah. had been, that were on stricter diets. Um, and it, it, it's really exciting when I get a new gaps or, or even pa like paleo uh -huh. customer out there, because I know that they've, um, you know, they, that they can indulge in, in chocolate again yeah. and feel good about it. So what was your first sale? Do you remember? Uh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> no, when I started this company, it was it was on a yard sale. I didn't have the funds to start the company. Um, and I took the money from my kids um, selling off their strollers and, and that kind of things, their, their, their little uh, belongings, um, baby uh, stuff. And so I took this, the money from the sale of the yard sale. It was about $500. And I bought a small tempering machine on eBay. <laughs> it was a little <laughs> tabletop tempering machine. And I was able to temper... Um, about, uh, it was like two, uh, four cases of chocolate. There's 12 bars to our case. So I had four cases wrapped and ready mm -hmm. to sell. Mm -hmm. And I walked it over and I say this all the time. It's kind of funny. It makes me laugh. I walked it over in my diaper bag. <laughs> 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 it's a, it's, it's, it's actually nice. It's a beautiful, it's black. So it looks kind of like mm -hmm. professional. Sure. I stuck it in the diaper bag and I walked it over, um, to the store next door to my house. It's two, it's, um, Burns is, Ferns. It's a, a country store, two houses mm -hmm. away, uh, and he took the whole line in, which I was very excited about. So, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And are you still in Ferns? We're still in Ferns. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sell a lot, actually. Uh, a lot of our bars um, in All right. there. So mm -hmm. let's talk about the bars themselves at sure. this point. So yeah. ingredients. Mm -hmm. How many ingredients are in there? Where do they come from? 
How do you do this? Uh, yeah. Um, well, we're really careful about the sourcing of our ingredients. Um, I eat this. <laughs> <laughs> I put this in my body. I'm very careful about all my ingredients. So it's uh, or all the ingredients are organic. They're fair trade, and they are uh, kosher certified. Um, we uh, sweeten just with honey, uh, no other sweetener. Um, our bars have a pinch. Um, our salted almond has Himalayan salt that we sprinkle mm -hmm. on the back of the bar. Mm -hmm. um, uh, all of our ingredients are just pure, pure in their form, and we temper and um, temper our chocolate. Our heat never goes above 118, so we keep our temperatures low too mm -hmm. in our bars, uh, so we can get the most nutrition out of out of um, the chocolate. Um, so ingredients matter; they're important to us. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of research lately that cacao's got a, a whole wide variety of health benefits. We're starting to understand which the temperature you just mentioned, sort of keeping the temperatures low, so you yeah, can get the most out of all sorts of flavonoids the, and other things in there, and, absolutely. and good things, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, what was how's the reception been in the in the so the gaps community, the paleo community? Mm -hmm. What kind of feedback do you get? Um, um, I get thank yous. I love that. Um, thank you for creating something that I can eat, mm -hmm. that I can enjoy, that's safe. Um, you know, that my kids can eat my, and I, I get emails all the time, um, from mothers, you know, that their children now can have something that they, that they can bring to birthday parties or they can indulge in now. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's nice to hear. It really is. And not only that, which actually really surprised me more than anything is a lot of our customers are, they just like honey. They like the taste of the, 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 the mm -hmm. of the honey in the bars. Mm -hmm. So it's not just always health conscious, mm -hmm. uh, consumers at my, and which, which actually, actually surprised me. We're reaching a wider population than I ever imagined we would with, with our chocolate. Mm -hmm. Well, now this is an important uh, part of the story, which is that, look, it's a really uh, confusing world to live in. I, I mm -hmm. mean, just trying to figure out my health insurance every year <laughs> oh, yeah. is like takes half my brain power and just trying to do taxes and just trying to figure out, you know, what's happening with my phone bill through AT&T. Not to pick mm -hmm. on them. I'm sure Verizon is just as bad, but <laughs> at and is my carrier. It's just, but everything's complex. And it so is. what I love about your story, mm -hmm. what drew me to it was this idea that you were going to go through the hard work of figuring out how to keep all the junk out of people's mouths. Yes. So they don't have to worry about that. That's kind of the promise and the premise of your company. Yes. Yeah. And I, you know, I think that what I, um, to keep it really um, simple in my life, because I remember going to the grocery store for the very first time when I decided to put my child, my, my children all on the GAPS diet and walking through the grocery store and standing in the front in tears. And, I, and I've gone to the grocery store, I don't know how, thousands of times probably. And, um, I stood there and I didn't know what to buy and it was really, and I felt overwhelmed. Um, wh how do I do this? How do I shop? Um, mm -hmm. and so I, I always tell people that are, that, that ask me, how do you do it? And just real, real ingredients. You keep it very simple back to basics. So fruits, vegetables, um, meats, try to keep it organic. So just really back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Um, nothing processed. Nothing that comes, um, it, nothing that you have to open and, and, and that's processed that's, um, that you have to keep, keep to the outer edges of the grocery stores is another kind of tip that I have for consumers too. Um, so my bars, I, I keep them very clean, uh, ingredients, um, pure, just the purest ingredients that I can find and incorporate them into a bar at low temperatures, um, and, uh, temper into a sh uh, shelf stable bar for our customers. And, and the part that I um, like that I've been talking about for a while with my tribe is is this idea that um, that eating organic. Uh, I think it originally began because a lot of people were thinking, well, this is good for my body to eat organic. But mm -hmm. on the cover of the Pure Seven wrapper now is B. Oh yeah. And the bees, of course, have been going through a colony collapse disorder, both wild and the honeybee, which gets more attention. But also we're seeing butterflies disappear. In fact, insects are disappearing everywhere. Yes. And that's because of the pesticides we're using. So eating organic is another way um, to sort of vote against the system of industrial agriculture that's destroying the absolutely. biosphere. Absolutely. Right? Yes. So A, it's probably better for ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely better yeah. for the world around us to be mm -hmm. eating organic. And yes, yeah. it costs a little bit more for a variety of reasons. But it's important. Yeah. And I always say that um, it might cost a little bit more, but in the long run, it really doesn't. You can spend that money on your food or you can spend that money at the doctor's, on my doctor's bills. I'm spending less money today on good quality, high quality food that's organic, that comes from the farms. I source my food very carefully mm -hmm. and um, we're healthy. 
where I, I, I don't remember the last time I had to take my kids to the doctors. That years, it's been years, and, and I have four children. Mm -hmm. We don't go to the doctors anymore. We mm -hmm. don't need to. Um, we keep our bodies healthy. Mm -hmm. It sounds simple, but it's not actually, because it's so much easier to shop in the center aisles of the store, it is. and it's cheaper. Of it course. is. It is. You know. Yeah. As we get busy, it's it's true. Um, I have to check back in and come back to what's important. Yeah. Um, as my life gets a little hectic with the company, mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, I, I have to bring myself back to what's important. Food, my food sources are mm -hmm. important and not um, take the easy way out. You're right. Because right. that, that's that's more expensive in the long run. Yeah. Absolutely. So so let's continue with the Pure 7 story. Yeah. Uh, Ferns was first. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> let's skip a few years. Where are you now? Aww. Um, the company's definitely growing. We are in with brokers and distributors now. We're um, just we're out in California in the mothers' markets, Erewhon. Uh, we're trying to we're focusing on the East Coast, mm -hmm. uh, building up our our stores on the East Coast still. But we are all the way out into California and Seattle. Um, you'll find us uh, in Texas. You'll find us all over mm -hmm. in stores. Um, we we are in Whole Foods uh, in the North Atlantic region and the Northeast over here. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're definitely growing. Wow. So you're part of Amazon now. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Absolutely. So, yep. <laughs> um, and of course it's a small business. So, so there's trials and tribulations and oh, ups and downs and you got to pour your heart into it. You do. Yeah, I do. I do. No, it's, it's, um, it's been my obsession. It really has my company. Um, I have, um, and you know, as a stay-at-home mother and a social worker, I, I wasn't a chocolatier or a chocolate maker. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't run um, a company at this size ever. So there's definitely learning curves here. Mm -hmm. Some mistakes, thank goodness, not too many um, large ones that um, have cost us much. So, uh, but we keep moving on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a passion of mine I, I, that I love. I, I, you know, I'm passionate about the product that I've made and mm -hmm. believe it needs to be out there. And... Uh, so what's next, and, and mm -hmm. where do you where do you want to go next with all of this? Mm -hmm. um, well, my, the goal is to continue growing um, throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're growing um, region to region, um, and, and just building upon. Right now, it's we're focusing East Coast, New York. Uh, although um, we have quite a presence out in California too, uh, but just kind of building up our warehouses as we grow and supporting the warehouses for distribution. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this stage, uh, so your competition, I, I assume a couple other people have figured out how to do yeah. honey tempered chocolate at this point in time. Uh huh. And yeah. What, what really differentiates Pure 7 at this stage? What makes yeah. you different? Well, I think we're the, um, the company that's been out there the longest. There's, um, there's a few more that I see, uh, but they're not nearly uh, at the growth level that we're at and able to produce to the quantities that we are able to produce at. Um, so I'm not sure how far um, some of the other companies that I've seen will be able to to grow because to uh, bring honey sweetened chocolate into large scale quantities is a very difficult process. It's like another huge learning curve. <laughs> uh -huh. um, it, it's not easy. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, there, but right now, um, there's not much out there for honey sweetened chocolate. So mm -hmm. shelf stable honey sweetened chocolate bars, I should say. Shelf stable. Shelf stable. I've seen some. <laughs> I think somebody else is making something um in maybe in a jar. <laughs> in a jar. Uh, in a jar. Yep. Which yeah, or sounds in like the, you a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, a few years ago. And I was like, no, that's yeah, we need we need a bar. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah, a bar that I could break and I want to hear that snap. So that was really important to me. Um, to make sure that it was uh, tempered properly and that it would have that snap, just like all the other bars out there. Mm -hmm. I wanted to feel like I was eating a, a bar that was uh, a chocolate bar off the shelf. Mm -hmm. I wanted a chocolate bar. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. So if people wanted to find it, where where can they? You mentioned some Aww, regions. Yeah. And Whole Foods is one specific thing, but you have a website. Yeah, we do and... have a website. They could find us online at pure7chocolate.com and order right off uh, on our site. We're on Amazon and um, some online markets like Thrive Market. Um, but on our website, you'll find um, a store locator. So you could um, find us, uh, find maybe a store local to you by checking us online. Okay. And uh, this has been uh, just a fabulous sort of um, experience for me to be involved in. And, and, and the elements of local investing are mm -hmm. that it's not easy, right? 
there's due diligence involved and you know, there were a lot of conversations <laughs> and pouring through numbers and looking at things and really trying to understand who you are because I, I invest in people, not yeah. not companies really. So I believed in you and what you're out about and that this story really needs to get out there because it's it's not chocolate. That's the tip yeah. of the sphere on this story, but the rest of the sphere is Yeah, the story. It's the story. It's you know, the and it's not and being told. And... You're right. Yeah, it's really not getting out there. I uh, the story needs to be uh, told more. Um, that that yeah, we're we're working hard. We're um, opening new stores, but um, yeah, I would love love the story to get out there, to be heard. Well, absolutely. But there's I'm... options. That's important. Yeah. There's options. Yep. And uh, but those options, geez, people have to have to. It takes so much effort to figure out how to <laughs> eat well. It does. It really does. I mean, it's not even clear to me what organic is beginning to mean in certain circumstances at this stage. I you agree. Know, is an organic apple from New Zealand better than mm. one that's local mm -hmm. that's maybe not organic or mm -hmm. close to? It's hard to it's hard yeah. to parse all that out. So it is. Pure Seven's busy making those decisions for people. Yep. <laughs> <Which is good>. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, and um, so so let's let's how how long ago did you start this? Um, uh, healing process with your children and your family and Aww. what was that 12 it was about six years ago yeah mm -hmm. about six years ago yep. mm -hmm. my kids are doing fair pretty well all of them doing really well um yeah yeah I feel really fortunate actually my daughter um I, I feel really really fortunate she was scheduled for surgery she was a year old when we started the the gaps diet I put her on the diet she was scheduled for surgery two weeks after we uh, started the GAPS diet and we were able to cancel the surgery. She wasn't hearing. Um, she didn't really have eye contact. She was rocking back and forth and stimming and all those symptoms went away. Um, we, I was, you know, at, putting her on the GAPS diet at an early age, at age um, one, I, I feel like it really um, got her off to a good start in life. Mm -hmm. uh, healing and sealing her gut and replace, and, and uh, rebalancing the gut flora for her. Um, I, I do. I feel really fortunate. She's doing excellent. Yeah, um, well, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, there. a full, complete recovery with with um with my my little girls. I feel so fortunate. Mm -hmm. And as we look across the the larger landscape, um, you know, it was really astonishing to me. I spent about a month in Buenos Aires in June, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't really notice a lot of difference in in the restaurants there per se. But what was mm -hmm. completely obvious was the level of obesity there is is almost non-existent. Yeah, literally almost non-existent. Yeah. So very sort of European French sort of. Um, uh, body shapes there, and it was really obvious when, the minute I landed back in Miami that I was back in the U.S. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so it's it's not that that there's you know something going wrong with the food system everywhere, but there is something happening in the United States that's been that's really astonishing. Whether yeah. it's some conflation of things, whether it's culture plus marketing plus what's in the food plus yep. I don't know what all the factors are, but it's really obvious to yeah. go to a culture that's that's living more obviously healthily mm. at least from a body mass index standpoint and to come back here. But then that's just sort of what you can see. And then underneath that, the levels of metabolic disease disorder and the amount of money spent on those metabolic diseases yeah. um, is, is astonishing. No, I agree. And I, what I believe I, what I believe that to be personally from my experience is all the sugars and the carbs. We're afraid of fats. We need good fats in our body. So our body now um, operates and fuels off of the fats, not the sugars and the carbs. And I, and I really do believe that that's where a lot of the obesity is coming from and the disease is coming from. Mm -hmm. um, good fats we should not be afraid of. Uh, coconut oil and olive oil, um, animal fats, they're important. All, uh, avocado and egg yolks, those are all really important fats for our body that feeds our body. Right. Um, so that's, that's what I really believe and what I see. Yeah, and that's why I was personally drawn to this story because, you know, peak prosperity it's all about the larger story. And so um, I never would have been interested in chocolate alone. Hmm. But I am interested in this idea of how that ties in with the larger story of nutrition, because we need to become aware of these things and uh, so that we can decide for ourselves if we want to um, uh, moderate that. I, you know, I'm once I controlled my nutrition by understanding what was inflammatory and what mm. was you know, the, mm -hmm. let you say carbs and sugars. For me, those turn out to be very inflammatory. inflammatory. And, right. Mm -hmm. I noticed that my, my yep. joints hurt, my tendons hurt. Yep. I said I'm getting old, which is true, but mm -hmm. not but... that true. Right. So <laughs> we have all kinds of excuses. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and it was astonishing to me the uh -huh. amount of, of healing and repair that happened yeah. very rapidly once yeah. 
I took certain things out of my yeah. diet. And yep. how is this not more well known? I don't know. And I feel the same way. When I started the diet, I only did it for my kids. I wasn't doing it for me. I thought I was fine. I was tired, but I had four kids. I thought I was supposed to feel this way. And by the end of the day, I was dragging and I was pulling myself. I remember I was pulling myself up the stairs on the railing, trying to get myself up to bed by nine o'clock. I was exhausted. Um, and when I started doing the GAPS diet, um, shortly after, I had um, just... I didn't feel that way anymore. Mm. You know, if I was tired, it's a different kind of a tired feeling. It wasn't the same kind of tired, like that whole body, bone dead, drag myself tired. When I'm tired now, it's like, oh, I'm tired. It's time to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit tired. I'm yawning. But it's not like your whole body aches of right. being tired. And when I wake up in the morning, my joints don't ache. My feet don't tingle. I'm not um, sore. My, my joints uh, feel good. Mm -hmm. I feel good. Now, you have some of this story um, on a blog somewhere, do you not? I do, yeah. <laughs> All right, so how would we direct people to that if they wanted to read about yeah. that? You know, I did the blog um, when I was going through the GAPS diet personally. I just thought it was something that was kind of missing out there, and I wanted just to help people go through the stages of the GAPS diet. It's, it's a difficult diet to go through, so if you're interested, and I, full disclosure, I have not even done anything to that site in two and a half years, mm -hmm. three years. I've been busy with Pure 7 Chocolate. Uh, but there, it's it still gets, I think I looked like um, six months ago, it still gets like 100, 150 hits a day. People do look at this to go at it and look for recipes, but the pictures aren't, I'm sorry, they're just basic photos. I'm not a <laughs> photographer. They're not beautiful, but the recipes are good and it'll show you page by page the stages of the diet and what foods are allowed. And it's it's a really good way to start it. Um, it's uh, healingthroughgaps.blogspot.com. Healingthroughgaps.blogspot.com. Yes, that's where you can find it. <laughs> right, and, and I wanted to raise that. I'm sure yeah. people are interested, but also to see the, the level of rigor, the background, sort of the journey, mm -hmm. the art that you came through so that they understand, oh, this isn't, this is not to, don't take this the wrong way. It isn't just chocolate. No, it's not. No, there's a no, whole reason food. under this, right? Yeah, there yeah. really is. It's about food. It's, it's my passion around healing foods that heal the body. Mm -hmm. And chocolate came out of it because it was a piece that was missing. That was, I loved, I wanted that again in my life. So I had to figure out a way to create it that wasn't going to be harmful for the body. Right. So for anybody listening, if you're thinking, well, I want to, um, I even hate the word diet. If you're thinking about yeah. uh, a new eating regime and you're worried <laughs> that you will be in a hair shirt deprivation, lack of, of awesomeness, fear not. <laughs> there is, there's, a, there's a chocolate available for you and your loved ones, if you want, that, that you can have confidence in. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's part one. And, and part two is there is a larger story of healing here through nutrition, through what we eat, mm -hmm. um, that again, self-education, really important. People have to understand that the powers that be in this story are, have, do not have your best interest at heart. They have your wallet in mind. Um, so, so that's what they're after in, in uh -huh. this story. And, uh, Cheap, fast food, yeah, yep. for and profits. That, and that for whatever sets of reasons, uh, I know that a lot of people are well-meaning in the conventional medicine space and a lot of doctors and nurses who want to do better, but the way the system is designed with five minutes per patient yeah. and what is allowed and what they're allowed to do and, and they, how they will get in trouble if they don't do certain things, there's a lot of things forcing mm. otherwise, I think, very well-meaning people into uh, doing a form of a set of treatments, which end up targeting symptoms, not causes. No, oh, I believe that. Absolutely. That was my experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's, again, it's just structurally, it's how the system is set up and all of that. And, um, and then finally that, that, you know, it, if you want to really begin to feel better that you're taking control of what you're putting in your body, understand that it matters. It really matters what you're taking in. So starting with the purest ingredients and organic and all of those things is actually really important. Mm -hmm. It's really important. So um, with that, I want to thank you for your time today. And if anybody wants to find out more, they go to pure7chocolate.com. Yes. Or? They can go to Healing Through Gaps. It's uh, Healing Through Gaps is G-A-P-S, gaps.blogspot.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, if anybody wants to contact me more directly about um, about the uh, investment and, and how I approached it and all of that, uh, please feel free to do so. And because uh, I'm happy to talk about that side as well. Um, this is something that I know a lot of my listeners very, you know, we don't want to invest in the stock market. Don't really believe in that. So where does money go? Yes. Very important. And so uh, to align your money with your mission, your values, with, you know, doing good, feeling good, being good. Um, mm -hmm. Those are all, all really important things for me in this story. So Julie, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris.